so let's start today's uh, UX talk. So we have Rahul Deshpande with us. So he is joining soon. Uh, he is actually is stuck in and he is driving. So he'll connect from there. Uh, I just welcome Rahul. Uh, I think you can. Hi, hi. Good evening, Tushar. Thanks to be uh, here. Thanks. Thanks for your time. I hope. Uh, 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 you are driving safe and let's start. Yeah. Uh, so before we start, I will just introduce about Rahul uh, and uh, also I will take a few minutes to uh, talk about UX talks. Uh, yes. So today we have a very interesting topic uh, regarding uh, UX for AR and VR. There are a lot of uh, excitement about this domain. Many people want to work with this field. So this will be very important for upcoming talent plus uh, the who want to make career in UX uh, in AR VR. So I am definitely sure this will be really uh, eye opening for everybody. So before we I will introduce, I will just uh, give me two minutes to explain. Uh, I talk about uh, UX talk itself. So UX talk I started uh, in lockdown time. So there was. Uh, Lot of confusion and everything everybody is work from home and so that was idea where uh, we started one series for webinars i think we uh, we done almost seven or eight nine webinars which i personally conducted for different different topics then eventually that turned into a ux talk as a platform and we have very good speakers so far almost we are, this is our 20 plus uh, ux talk we are ha happening today and we cover a lot of sub uh, topics related to UX or designing. In between on 2nd October, we have conducted a dedicated conference for women in design. So we have a whole packed day uh, where women in design, they are talking about uh, design field, UX field, usability, testing, everything. So we can almost cover a lot of subjects so far. And uh, just small announcement uh, I want to do today is that uh, probably this will be one of the last UX talk. Uh, this is today's happening. Uh, I'm giving small pause for UX talk. Uh, we are going to stop for uh, because I have some different plans. Uh, maybe I'm planning on 26 January. Uh, I will relaunch UX talk in a different way. Uh, I'm adding few features where uh not only uh ux pr professionals but other professionals in it sector or in a design sector should get benefit of this so there are some features will be uh knowledge base some features will be uh for you know, upcoming talent itself so this will be our one of the last ux talk and i am happy rahul is part of this uh i am following him very long time i have seen his uh, how the ethos is itself companies and so I'm very happy uh, today we have Rahul with us. Uh, also one more small announcement is that on 26 itself I'm trying to launch one more platform. Uh, this is specifically for uh, who are the uh, experts or who, are, who have good experience in the design field itself. This platform is not only dedicated to UX but entire design field. And this is about this will be is going to be one of a one of a unique uh, uh, platform where uh, both the people who want to learn and people who want to they are mentors they are professors or maybe this these all are and across globe people are coming on this platform so the name in itself I will reveal on 26 January but yes so today uh, let's see uh, so I will. Please follow me on LinkedIn and uh, where you get all details about 26 January. So yes, coming back to today's talk, I'm, today we have Rahul Rishpande with us. Uh, he is a, fo a founder and CEO of uh, Ethos. It is a, uh, they work with the AR, VR and a lot of technologies plus and also in different, different domains also. Uh, I think Rahul will tell us more about that. And plus today, uh, the, our topic is about how uh, UX can help out in uh, ARVR, or I will say differently, 
how ar vr uh, technology is looking up to ux professionals or what they can contribute in this uh, field okay so once again i'm welcome uh, rahul and i thanks everybody for joining this and hopefully you will get some uh, good information uh, when when we from this today's talk so welcome rahul and first we can start with please uh, just introduce yourself uh, no, uh, you can uh, share your some journey because i also believe everyone's journey is very inspirational for everyone so so to, you are in this field very long uh, you are from uh, uh, how your education and basically how itosh is formed and you can tell about something about your company also so i can hand over now rahul if you, you can start Yes, thank you, thank you, Tushar. I'm going to turn on the sure, uh, sure. video for a second, and this is how I look when I'm traveling and yes. stuck on a road. So absolutely, uh, you know. Th but thanks for the opportunity. And uh, sorry, I couldn't be the uh, any any particular location. Uh, but thanks to the. technology as well because i do have a 4g connection and i'm able to take this session on the on the call so uh definitely happy to be here uh i i i could turn on the video i i'm getting a a moco a2 sure sure so i'm just trying to figure out uh, yeah so just a minute uh then let me turn off my video so otherwise people will get distracted okay <laughs> yeah you yes uh, you yeah 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 yes 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 thank you thank you thank you so yeah uh, first of all thanks a lot and i would uh, like to thank you tushar for doing this uh, doing this activity and doing this activity during the uh, pandemic and the lockdown and all, all other things uh, this is what the uh, the dedication is uh, called you know i so all the participants who are on the call i would say tushar has been in this field for many years and i i know him for a few months now but uh, i've been following him i know him i know about tushar for many many years i would say because a lot of people who uh, we have uh, at ethos have been trained by uh, tushar and i continue to hear about tushar from uh, many other people as well so uh, uh, so tushar thanks a lot uh, incredible uh, job that you are doing in this field and promoting user experience in true sense uh, and and uh, definitely uh, you know all all these efforts and i you know th this is like a social work right so many times uh, all the time that you take from your personal time and promote this activity uh, really thank you and congratulate you on on this success Uh, i hope the new format that you are going to start is going to be more exciting and uh, more uh, useful for the uh, community in the user experience field so once again i i would say you know keep keep doing it uh, and uh, we all uh, look forward to hearing from you and all the things that you bring to this community mm -hmm. uh, so coming back to me and and ithosh uh, so you know i'm you know about 26 years in the in the field um and uh, of course it thought for about 9 years uh, and i started this company with no no background of user experience or no background of any experiential stuff uh, i come from i'm a mechanical engineer worked in con high tech and then in sales i just wanted to start a company which would solve a real uh, world problem and uh, we thought that the technology especially the digital technology and uh, some creating some cool things using digital technologies uh, would solve some real uh, business problem so that's where we started uh, almost 9 years ago on december 1st 2011 was uh, kind of official uh, launch uh, date for ethosh and uh, since then we evolved you know my uh to be honest 9 uh, years ago i had no, i i didn't even know what user experience uh, mean right so i i graduated as i worked through uh, many people in the organization and outside uh, really learned through uh, learned learned on the job uh, learned through experiences 
uh, and over nine years have done oh, some amazing. Yeah, so uh, I hope uh, you're able to hear me and please mute yourself if, yeah. if you are in a listening mode. So uh, that's where, you know, along the journey, we created some amazing experiences for our customers. And, uh, uh, you know, as, as uh, about, about five, six years ago, right? Initially, we weren't calling ourselves as an experiential company. We were calling ourselves as a digital content company, uh, although we were creating experiences, uh, uh, no idea about what, what really experience means. Right? So I think uh, there is a lot of uh, correlation between a physical experience that we take and a digital experience. And that correlation, once I started to get more information, I started to talk to expert, experts about it. I started to learn from my customers, from my team. I realized that we actually are in the field of uh, experiences. So we create experiences at Ethos uh, for our customers, uh, for their customers. And uh, this may sound a little bit confusing, but what we want, what what I mean is that whatever we do for our customers, which are which could be in the healthcare field, which could be in the manufacturing, which could be in any other domain per se, uh, we create those digital applications that uh, has a component of uh, experience. Now, what is experience? I think, I think, and I'm not gonna preach here because there are a lot of experts, better experts than I am today on the experience side of, of world, user experience uh, side of the world, but really the experiences that touch us, right? As human beings, uh, we talk a lot about empathy. Uh, we uh, talk about connections, we talk about um, you know, leave, leaving memories with, with our customers so that or, or the users and so that the users come back to uh, taking those experiences uh, more and more. Uh, and, and that's what uh, Ithosh has been doing over the last uh, nine years. Uh, so that's very quickly about Ithosh. Uh, you know, we are about, we, are, we have been growing and last, even in COVID, uh, we almost grew about 30, 40%. Uh, and we have added close to around 20, 25 people in the last four months. Uh, we have a lot of uh, openings and we continue to hire and grow. So today we are about 75 people organization based out of Pune, India, uh, serving global customers, uh, customers all over the world from uh, Sydney, Australia, all the way to San Francisco, California. Uh, and I'm, I'm very proud of our team, uh, very proud of the work that they do for our customers. Um, so that that's a fantastic uh, journey uh, that we have had so far. Um, I'm going to come back to VR and AR. Uh, Tushar, uh, I just wanted to pause here, and uh, sure, maybe sure. we we yeah. go to the next question. Yeah, sure. And and that was really a great journey. And uh, I, I think a couple of days back I saw uh, Itoshi got some awards also, and that was uh that was incredible journey and i know it is a, a, always a team effort that we are putting in great uh so before as our today's talk topic is about uh, ux in ar but uh, uh we can start with you know uh, some basic questions earlier you know so what is uh, what is uh, between uh, ar vr is all about and we can say you know, what is the difference between ar and uh, ar technologies and vr technology so uh and plus what we have the traditional designs uh, environment where we work so so just you can you, you can put some light on that you know, so what is ar vr and what is the difference between these two terminal terms absolutely absolutely uh, so uh, before i go there i wanted yeah. to just take few minutes in sharing uh, some more details about how we got into it sure, right so sure. about 5 years about 5 years ago uh, I was visiting a client and he showed me a cardboard, uh, which he said, okay, you like, and he put a, he put a, his uh, camera phone in it and he ran, he ran an app and uh, that app basically, uh, I was literally amazed, right? Looking at the video that uh, I was seeing on the screen uh, over there because my eyes were completely blocked from any distractions that come to come on my eyes and I was completely focused on what is what was happening on the screen. And I thought that I was actually there. I was actually, you know, I was, I was looking at that race car uh, that he was uh, showing me. 
and I, I was I was literally amazed. So you know, I asked him, you know, what is this? So he said, this is a virtual reality technology, and he later told me that he he has a video, and that video he wants to convert it into a a virtual reality experience. So I said, okay, you know, I've I've heard it for the first time, but I'm super excited, and you know, would love to work on this thing. Now the funny thing was that actually the video that he showed me was actually a simple 2D screen video. It was not even a 360 degree video. And I, um, so uh, again, I, for for some of the new people, you know, 360 degree video is is actually you feel like you are in that environment, and as you rotate your head, you see all all the all things around you. Um, that was not the case actually. What he showed me was uh, a 2D video, but just that experience and and that uh, get, getting away from all the distractions that you would generally get on your eyes and and getting immersed into what you are seeing in in front of your eyes so close to it, to it that just I, I was mesmerized and and that's how I got hooked on to the technology of course I came back uh, to the office uh, one of my colleagues Nikhil Patak I told him Nikhil we got to do something about it and I I I uh, shared with him a video which my client gave, and I said we need to convert this into a, a VR video, and and he he worked on it, and and we converted that into a VR video, and we show, showed it to the customer. Customer got happy, but again the funny thing was the video that I got from customer was actually a 2D video. So, you know, I again I I am sharing this because you know that time five years ago it was just that experience of getting immersed into something was out of mind right it was it was out of this planet right. uh, so we we were lit, really excited about it and and that's how we we started this journey uh, eventually we figured out you know we really can't do uh, we really can't see a 2d video in a in a VR experience experience although if you ask me there are today uh, we are uh, uh, kind of experiences that actually show 2D videos on a large screen, uh, and that is that is, that gets played on a uh, either in a healthcare situation or even in a air travel or other kinds of situations. So, uh, but that that's how we got into uh, virtual reality. Uh, eventually, we we started working on augmented reality as well, uh, and and we have been doing. We have done more than more than 50 projects on virtual reality. Almost a couple of dozens on on augmented reality so far. Uh, to to your question, uh, Tushar, on what is the difference between virtual reality and augmented reality, and and I, I want to take take also also talk about you know what there there is a combination of it right, which is called as extended reality or mixed right. reality. Right. Mixed so reality. Um, think of it this way, right? So if if you like, I'm sitting in a in a car right now. And I want to be somewhere else. I want to be there in a meeting with Tushar. Mm -hmm. And in that case, and but I want to see where Tushar is, is sitting. Then that means I need to be transported into a new virtual world. And when we are transported into a new virtual world, it is called as a virtual reality, right? Mm -hmm. uh, augmented reality is something where I'm sitting in a car and I would like to look at a, a, a seat next to me and I want to see Tushar on that seat, right? So augmenting your 3D virtual image of it, augmenting it with the physical environment that I am in, right? So that is a augmented reality. Now, uh, this uh, difference is, is it's pretty obvious, although there are technologies which are blurring this difference, right? You could, right. You could be at a different place uh, and at the same time augment some more a real uh, virtual images into that uh, virtual environment, right? So, uh, if you guys have seen, um, there was a movie by Steven Spielberg called uh, Real Player One, uh, Ready Player One, and it, it has a technology which is virtual reality, but it also has a, a glimpses of this mixed reality. So, uh, that is what really the virtual reality is, augmented reality as, and the uh, mixed reality is. Uh, and I don't want to get into too many details and, and preach about it, but you know, uh, this is how I and we at Ethosh consider as, as a clear distinction, which is, you know, if I'm gonna, if I want to be distracted from the distractions around me, right? If I want to get away from 
here and I want to immerse into Himalayas, I would use virtual reality. If I want to uh, put put Himalayas in front of me, uh, where I am today, then I would like to use augmented reality. And mix is a combination that I may be at, in Himalayas through virtual goggles, but I may have other elements that augment into that uh, reality or a physical reality. So uh, that is something of a mixed reality. Uh, it is a bit confusing. Uh, however, you know, there, there are use cases uh, of virtual reality, augmented reality, and, and mixed reality that, that differentiate each of these technologies and why and how you use them uh, in, a, in a real environment. I think the, I think your best way you have articulated this uh, the, the difference between I think hope audience are also now understood you know, what is the difference and where they overlap also so there are two many things we can do in future so now coming back to our uh, audience today it is I what we have today is UX that is user ex experience we are talking so as now you have uh, you have worked with different different uh, customers also different domains also. So, what is your take on you know how uh, the UX is is you know, as a uh, discipline and as a field? Uh, what is you, you see as a scope where the UX is will be proving to be or what are the future is all about and how the scope of UX in AR and VR? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, so Tushar, I hmm. uh, you know I have learned about this topic through various different uh, exchanges of uh, uh, conversations right over with with my customers with experts in this area um, and and what i have learned you know first of all uh, when we talk about user experience right there are and i don't want to preach about you know the the method of user experience designing which is you know where it starts with the research empathy and all the way to uh, actually creating a design uh, and creating a user interfaces for it uh, i i want to i want to talk about the uh, the problems uh, first right so uh, i think we all know as user experience designers that whatever we are creating or designing uh, it ultimately has a purpose to solve now uh, e now I am in a serious business uh, user experience uh, kind of a use case, right? So, what we do, we we create user experiences for enterprises, right? So that is that is a one use case of it. The second use case of it is the user experiences for consumers, right? Where where the app or be it VR or AR or whatever it is is directly consumed by the consumers, right? And for the right for their day-to-day -day activities or games or whatever it is. The third uh, set of users, I would call them as, uh, and I, I would put them uh, uh, entertainment and gaming into those one casual users, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the, uh, and, and the second consumers that I talked about, those are more like, they, they look at user experience from their day-to-day, -day, uh, like use case perspective, but the casual users are the one uh, who would like to take, you know, push the boundaries uh, of user experience. I personally believe like the gamers and entertainment really push the boundaries of user experience. Uh, and a perfect example of it is a, if, if we take like there, there was, there is a very popular game, which is called as a Fortnite, which has been, you know, I've seen it last year or so. Uh, a lot of youngsters, a lot of teen teenagers play that game. Uh, and it's been, very popular all over the world, right? So that is uh, what happens in that uh, game is really, you know, where, where a user gets immersed in that environment. Although you may be seeing that game on a 2D screen, there may be many mm. things in between, right? <clears throat> and I've seen, I've seen kids playing it on a large screen and they are all immersed. They have their uh, friends around them and they're, they're cheering and talking and all these things. But in spite of that, the user gets immersed in the uh, in that environment, right? And uh, so that is that I personally believe is is a uh, is where user experience gets tested, right? Day to day operations is where uh, you know as long as we look at convenience and comfort uh, from a user experience perspective, uh, that 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 gets uh, served over there. 
the first set of users which are more like enterprise we have to of course look at the convenience and comfort but in addition to that we have to look at many other aspects from a business perspective like compliance like processes the user journey and and so and so forth right so there are i i would categorize users into one which is serious second you know day to day consumers and the third which are casual but they push the boundaries on the user experience now what we do uh, at ethos are the first two things right which is more on the uh, more on the enterprise side a serious uh, user experiences as well as a consumer user experiences and over there what we want to or we have been trying to do i would say mm-hmm. is to bring the uh fundamentals of uh those uh entertainment and gaming into uh the enterprise and and consumer user base now i'll tell i'll give you an I'll, i'll give you a reason behind it sure okay especially on the virtual reality and augmented reality what happens is that these uh, these technologies are primarily created for those casual gamers entertain type of users it was not created with an idea of business use cases right so the evolution uh, from where it has come right it it has a little bit of that flavor of pushing the boundaries on user experience that means that means it is really stimulating the sense sensory organs right what what gaming does is like really means in in some cases we also hear some unfortunate cases where you know because of games some un- unfortunate events happen but what what gaming does or what entertainment does is that it it stimulates those sense multi sensory uh stimuli right so that that's what it does so we in in vr and ar we want to bring those elements into our day to day uh user experience design right so be, the, the, and i want to give two example virtual reality was started as a gaming platform where you know um and it is still a very popular gaming platform where people can where users get immersed and they feel like they are in that environment they feel like they they are in a in a war zone and they can look behind and maybe the uh the fire may be coming from behind it may be coming from front it may be coming from left right anywhere right so they need to be alert and they need to uh play that game with the most the utmost uh, uh, reflexes and attention and focus right and but people enjoy it uh, be uh, or or take an example of early game of roller coaster rides right so uh, that's where these games became popular in virtual reality and that's how the virtual reality got popular the best example of augmented reality is uh, the game of pokemon go right it mm. was everywhere people were playing it it was it was long time ago 5 6 years ago everywhere so it it all started there right so that is where it all started and now of course it is it has entered into the businesses and enterprises and other things so from a uh, from technology perspective or or from a thought pers- uh, process perspective we look at solving a business problem but from a designing perspective user experience perspective we want we try to bring in elements that excite the users while serving the purpose that the business want to serve and so that's uh, kind of a good mix of uh, things that we are, we are trying to bring uh, especially in the virtual reality and augmented reality basically uh, what i uh, we can say from the research is on gain a key and without finding the purpose you cannot create some solutions so uh, Then, but while we are working on these technologies, so either VR or AR, so because in UX, when we learn UX or when we uh, work in different technologies with UX, like typical uh, web applications or mobile applications or enterprise, which are uh, simple uh, traditional technologies, I can say. So there is people say that we have to follow some methodologies for while doing UX. so people do follow like user center design or uh, today now we call it as, as a human center design also or maybe nowadays we seen hype of uh, design thinking or agile ux or lean ux there are a lot of terms in the ux field itself and whenever i i want to use these my knowledges which i maybe from source where i learn and so 
when i am to apply this knowledge to ar and vr as it as you know as in these projects or these technologies so is there really a, any difference in between first of all uh, i would like to know with the, between the traditional ux processes and if i want to work with ar vr that was the first aspect of this thing and second within ar and vr does this processes you need to change or we can say yes this is only uh, this traditional process also may work or in other words this question will be like uh, what ux professional prepare themselves to work on ar and vr yes yes great great question tushar i would say that uh, uh, while uh, once we understand the user right and what we are trying to do uh, we can draw from uh many great uh, uh findings and research that have gone into uh creating user experience design right so we uh, so user research i think it's a fundamental step uh that is still required right uh the uh, empathizing the user creating uh, user personas uh, different architects uh different um, you know their their needs challenges uh and then based on that you know creating a user journeys uh applying different touch points uh all that is applicable okay that uh, if if somebody is a user experience designer um a new designer or an experienced designer and they want to work in augmented reality or virtual reality absolutely uh, all their knowledge over the years that what they that they have learned and applied is still applicable in virtual reality and augmented reality i would i would say that here uh, you know in in this process we as i said right mm-hmm. as i define the users and categorize them into three different uh, like users right one is a business user a consumer and third and the third is like maybe a gamer or and you know user who take who loves the entertainment right mm-hmm. and uh, as long as we also understand this third type of user right and also we understand what what is it that they uh look for right and, and every hum- and many uh, human beings have that you know uh, desire to you know be be immerse and and play games and um you know uh, be challenged right uh, uh and conquer things right and that that all those elements which are our in, in inner desires those could be actually uh, brought uh in front when we are designing something and i'll give you an example okay here like virtual reality okay i when we look at user experience design we look at you know okay i want this menu that menu okay i want to click here and i want i want to use controllers and I, how do i use controllers and i i'll, I'll do all that design okay mm-hmm. however uh that is just a interaction point of view i personally believe that in a in virtual reality user experience design we have to think like a, also think like a director a movie director okay. right what I, what am i going to show on the left side what am i going to show on the right side what should come from behind what kind of music should i play what what kind of different things that would happen uh, in front of me and and because of that what kind of sensory organs do i want uh, to stimulate right what kind of reaction do i expect from users like if i am watching a movie uh a, let's say a, a a tragic movie you know there there are easily the it's a it's a director's and actors job to bring tears in in their audience's eyes right can we stimulate those kinds of sen- senses in our users uh, mind and can we do that the power is there in the tool uh, such as uh, vr or ar but can mm-hmm. we do that and in order to do that what kind of experience do we need to deliver what kind of uh, music should we have and i think there are those different aspects such as a creative director right the, the, a movie director uh, a music director right so a user experience designer would have to also think like like that and and bring those elements like a screenplay designing a a storytelling approach into their user experience designing so i think there is that additional aspect of it uh, most of the user experience designers are creative people themselves themselves so uh, it's a great combination to have 
uh, if somebody has worked on creating creative storyboards or or worked on films and uh, have done right. little bit of a uh, uh, you know um, cinematography mm-hmm. i think they will be able to bring in lot of uh, excitement and and a different a differentiation in creating uh, vr and ar experiences i think uh, what you are telling is definitely uh, many times i think i opener for i think listeners also because we do have in ux field people from animation and film background and somehow uh, you know they don't get a job and they land up into a design or in the ux field i think these guys are i think they can use this experience about their movie making or something in in this field uh, definitely and uh, so while you are talking you, know, you are i think two three times you uh, taken a uh, phrase like you know sensory things so that struck me you know uh, the the subject which i like more uh, when i work with the ux that is a human factors and human computer interaction where we do learn about uh, human abilities because that entirely depends on you know how sense organs our work so keeping in same track uh, i have a little bit different question you know here uh, as we are talking about sensory uh, stimulus and everything how good uh, these interactions you uh, ar and vr for the special need people or we can say the disabled people or do need to consider in our research because because in into a, a normal traditional uh, ux research we have to consider about special users uh, might be they are handicapped or might be they are color blind or might be they have some limitations with their basically sensory ab- uh, abilities so does this ar vr also we need to take care about this or we can do much more thing uh, for such kind of a users so what what is your take on this a great great question tushar mm-hmm. so i want to, i want to give uh, you know uh, two three uh, uh, examples here the first one is an example where let's say i'm i put in a virtual reality goggles and i am transported to a place uh, where there are uh, like uh, you know beautiful flowers with a, a fragrance beautiful fragrance right mm-hmm. now for a for a uh, for a uh, let's say a color blind color blind or a blind person that may you know they may not be able to see that right but as a user experience if i can add certain things like music if i can add a things like uh, slowly you know kind of emitting a fragrance of how those um, flowers would smell i think that would add extra element and not not just to uh, the color blind or a actual blind person but also to the uh, person with all uh, abilities it would give an extra it would stimulate an extra sensory organ such as uh, our smelling right? Uh, right so so that uh, absolutely the tool right the tool and its interaction using uh, sensors right the physical sensor the electronic sen- sensors can brought uh, different elements of user interactions that could be ve- very helpful for creating these experiences for people who m- may not be able to you know take the uh, the entire experience uh, either by their eyes or or ears or something right uh, they may be having some uh, defects over there so we uh, or disabilities uh, and and that uh, such kind of tools would give them uh additional experience although this particular field is extremely complex right and i want to give you yeah. two more examples on that and i want to i want to uh, uh you know be, before I, i end this topic one 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 more example is we are working with a mental health hospital in delhi right okay. and we are creating a virtual reality experience for treating obsessive compulsive disorder patients okay. and creating an experience for ocd for a uh, hygiene uh ocd is mm. extremely complex first of all the person with hygiene ocd would they wear the headset on the on their right uh, would they wear the goggles on their head right on their eyes second right. thing is that even if they were how do you create the environment where they would feel that right. uh, they are, they are surrounded by the <laughs> some one minute sorry sorry i just muted yeah please continue yeah yeah so uh, uh, in the in the surrounded uh, surroundings you know how they 
they would react right all all these things are there when we are designing uh, we have been designing this particular experience for ocd patient right so that there is a uh, and there we have been thinking about you know how do we bring a touch feel right how do we bring right. a smell feel right? right so that that and all these this goes beyond you know just a computer uh, user experience or a mobile based user experience it it has to go beyond that and look at the other experiential part as well uh, the third experience is where you know a person with a uh, a stroke uh, patient who has uh, kind of their motoring uh, abilities uh, mm -hmm. somewhat compromised you know we we are talking to iit delhi on in terms of how do how can we use virtual reality and uh, robotics to right. uh, treat patients uh, who have lost abilities to uh, for hand movement or leg mm -hmm. movement right so okay. those are the uh, those are the things which which are pushing the boundaries on on the technology and on the user experience right? so i think uh, you know to your point uh, absolutely there are you know there there is a lot of research that is going on and there is more research that need to be that that need to go in particularly for uh, people with uh, special abilities uh, or people with some you know mental uh, health issues or other kinds of uh, medical issue there there is a lot of applications that are possible however i would also say that it is also challenging for user experience designers to look at those um, uh, kind of uh, options or the use of technologies and extend their abilities to uh, come up with the best designs and best best user experiences particularly for targeting to that uh, user group right, definitely i think i, I think uh, uh, even today what we are you know you know even in the post covid situations also people are in uh, still people are in traumatized you know in how to they interact in a public domain so a lot of we have to touch screens everywhere so maybe by maybe in that area i think ar or vr could come up with good solutions where uh, we can treat even you know, how to reduce the phobias of the people might have not developed great and i think a health sector definitely as you said it is a really a challenging i think exciting also uh, it's a really and i am I'm, I'm very i was i was very impressed that you know you are working in already you are working in this kind of a environment and kind of a projects that is a really great stuff now uh, coming back to our uh, the core uh, topic of discussion that is a ux basically so uh, so when you uh, as in your team or when you hire uh, as a ux person or when you uh, say okay i want to do uh, ux for your uh, so probably next project or for which is in ar fair so what you think about you know ux that person or should have what what kind of a roles and responsibilities uh, you think that that should have or or what the ux person should bring on a table while working on this uh, on such projects uh yeah yes sushar so uh, i you know when we uh, look at the user experience uh, designers uh, working on ar and vr uh, role first of all we we make sure that the person has those fundamental knowledge and experience in designing and developing uh, user experience uh, be it on different kind of devices for different kind of use cases and so on and so forth right so the that is that is a one uh, and even when even when we hire freshers we look at their ability to go into uh, doing a user research empathizing with the users and coming up with ideas that that really solve the user uh, needs right so we we look at those fundamental things second thing that we look at is also a uh, storytelling right creative storytelling um, and we uh, we push uh, our team uh, and and this is not a one person job sometime okay? so tushar right. so i yeah. i do want to i do want to also uh, uh, share with uh, the audience here that uh, you know it, it doesn't mean that if you don't have one uh, that uh, one or or two then of of those skills then that means you are not fit for it it is not the case i think a person user experience designer need to understand that there are many aspects in creating vr and ar experiences that do require uh, extra additional um, skill sets right a storytelling a somebody who can write a great script and how do we take that script into creating interactions within vr or ar uh, how do we write 
a uh, like how do how do we work with a music director and come up with a great music that would surround the experience uh, or come or have a screenplay writer who would who would do a storyboarding and write a great screenplay uh, that a user will see uh, once they put put those VR headsets. So uh, that we we look at uh, that ability where the user experience designer is open to work with. I, first of all, understand that this is not a one skill set uh, kind of need, uh, and right. also understand the gap uh, and and either bridge by uh, by that person itself, right? Maybe there are some people who can you know navigate between the creativity and user experience very uh, swiftly. Uh, even if that is not the case, then at least work with the extended team and make sure that overall the experience uh, comes out really well. And even I'll go a little bit extra. In in this case, the UX plays a very important role, where they have to work with sometime hardware engineers. Right. So we have done a VR experience uh, for teaching uh, welders, right, or, or unskilled workers on how to weld. So in this case, we have created our own gun, a welding gun. And so how do you how do you create that welding gun? What should be the design of it, right? How would you hold it? Would it give a feeling of real welding gun? And then, uh, what would be the weight of it? Those are the those are the industrial designer things, right? Um, that they bring. But somebody who is a user experience designer would have to think through all these things and make sure that these things are incorporated in creating VR and AR uh, experiences. So, kind of it is a multifaceted uh, role. But at the same mm -hmm. time, even if one person doesn't have it, the the person the uh, the UX designer should understand and be able to work through these different disciplines and bring a great experience uh, or create a great experience for the end user. Great. I think that that was really great information. So I think the people listening, they if they're planning in to work with the UX uh, in AR I think they, they got really uh, uh, insight for this. Uh, okay, now uh, come, now we are coming towards end of this session. So I have a couple of questions. Then I will uh, we can open floor some questions we can take from audience. So I just request if you have any questions, just put in a, our Zoom chat window, so we can take s some good questions and uh, so we can have that small discussion over on audience question. So I have a couple of last questions here, like you know, so where what you think because. Uh, as it was itself now travel almost now nine years and uh, you are moving ahead. So where you find, uh, you know, as a futuristic, uh, if you think about uh, UX and designing and AR VR and uh, what upcoming technologies uh, we are coming and slowly we are moving towards screenless technologies. So I always say to, uh, I always do, you know, whenever I get a chance, to interact with designers, you know, because so far we are restricted ourselves to either 1024 screen. And my started career from, you know, where we used to design 800 by 600 screen. Then slowly we move to 360 as you know, mobile screens. But if you are going in future where we are supposed to do interactions for screenless technologies, where multi-modalities uh, should play. So what do you think, you know, where is the future about about where the UX and AR and VR can mix up and how, what is you can say, or what you can predict in future, what is, what is going to be uh, scope and role or UX? Yeah, so uh, great question, Tushar. And I think, uh, you know, uh, like when I started, there was no VR and AR, right? So this, this came around and uh, really has taken the world uh, with like a storm in terms of what this technology is going to do in future from education to entertainment and from enterprises to gaming, right? This, these technologies is going to change the interactions and interfaces for users in future. Uh, you brought about a, a zero interface, which is a, especially voice, right? Voice is a zero interface, zero touch uh, technology. Uh, and as a user experience designer, uh, we cannot ignore, we cannot get stuck in those screens, right? It is a screenless technology, but it is a voice. Like if, if I speak to Alexa and Alexa responds back, that is a user experience. So voice designing 
and and all that stuff is a, is is going to be part of user experience designing the second piece of it which also you talked about which is uh, really the future is not just going to be the voice you know there are already technologies uh, researched and proven where our neural network can send signals uh, to the uh, to computer uh, or other things and then it can react uh, based on the uh, our our uh, thought process or our neural network right so mm -hmm. sensors mm -hmm. sensory uh, kind of so um, on those fronts uh, you know there is a lot of development that is happening uh, on on the technology side eventually it's going to come into user world it's going to in, it, it is going to touch humans and that is where the user experience designers will play an important role uh, i would say that the the tomorrow's user experience designers would have to look at all these aspects from a physical uh, like you know our our physical actions uh, our interactions with computer our ex interactions with physical objects to our interactions uh, to you know other human beings through right. uh, neural networks which are not going to be uh, there may not be any physical environment in between right so right. Uh, this is a very broad range and i i I mean, my my reading on this, uh, to be honest, is that uh, that is where the world is moving. It may take five, seven, ten years. Okay, I I am not uh, forecaster to say you know how soon or uh, uh, slow it will go. Uh, but somebody who is a designer uh, shouldn't think that hey AI is not my field. I think they should at least start reading, get themselves conversed with the technology and what it means to human being uh, of future. I think that was uh, great information, and I think uh, so. Just I'm coming with my last question. It is you know. So, what is your advice for you know uh, people are from design background? They want to come, or maybe they're already doing UX, uh, but in traditional way. But uh, you know, and maybe uh, people are passing out from from their design schools. And so, what do you, what do you advise? You know, what I think a couple of things you already said. But just to wrap up the things, you know, uh, or as a for these young professionals, they are coming. So, what you can advise to them? Yeah. Um, so I, you know, to young people, this the first of all, the the future is uh, bright, and for AR, VR, or any any future technology perspective, user experience field is booming. Right? There is a huge demand for this field. So I think you know, keep keep your faith. Uh, on this field, uh, maybe a new technology will come, uh, but the fundamentals won't change, right? So, uh, be it user research to all the way to creating user interfaces, uh, things will definitely change, but the fundamentals won't change, right? Uh, what they, what you guys are learning, right? So that is one thing. So keep faith in it, and right? so that is very important. Second is, you know, don't don't fall for things like. Uh, you know, UX for AR and VR is completely different, and you have to rethink and all this. And that is not the case, right? As long as the yeah. fundamentals is they are there and they're they're good, uh, people can take new technologies and and make sure that the they adapt to those new technologies uh, as well. So don't uh, don't fall for um, you know what people say outside. Right? Keep keep faith in what you're learning and what you're doing. Uh, the third thing I would say is that. Uh, I think I think there is a need uh, to you know as I said right I, I talked a lot about creativity I talked a lot about uh, uh, be like a like more like a uh, director or a movie uh, makers uh, like music and other things so uh, if there and de depending on everyone's skills and strength right if if somebody's strength is more on the creative side then go on that side and at least. Uh, Acquire one or two those skills that require you to be more creative, uh, and not necessarily you would have to do everything by yourself. But at least having an understanding on that part would always help in bringing that into creating these futuristic um, experiences. Uh, if if that is not doing uh, your strength uh, apart from the UX, uh, there is another great is go and understand more on the business side of of the things, right? Uh, where if somebody is doing uh, like an MBA or other things that would add more business uh, background to uh, UX designer skills, 
Um, so that, that is another thing. The, the third is maybe on the technology side. Somebody may say, okay, you know, I want to, I want to go deeper into the technology and understand it, right? You may not become a programmer or you may not write a code. However, uh, one can at least uh, get a good knowledge on the technology side and, and expand their skill set from a UX perspective. Because mm -hmm. I think tomorrow's UX designers uh, may require at least some touch points with these different aspects of uh, creating those experiences. Right. And def definitely that was good. And I think I always, uh, my personal belief will be that anyhow we have to design for human beings. So human touch is and is always should be there. Okay, thanks for, and we have some couple of questions. So let's, uh, I will read out some questions. Okay, so we have Vikram here, uh, who is ask, asking, may I request to kindly do, let me uh, let me know which tool you are using for 3D content creation, which can be then augmented AR or using get immersive into VR. So basically he's asking maybe what tools uh, we need to learn or something. Yeah. yeah. So our 3D content gets created in Blender and then yeah. we use Unity uh, or Unreal, uh, one of yeah. those tools uh, to integrate the 3D content for AR and VR. Right. Uh, Amol is asking how to start uh, thought process towards AR VR project. What is the starting point for the same? I think, uh, you know, the first of all starting point is, is always uh, the user, right? So. Uh, what does user want? What are we trying to uh, create for the user? What experience does do we want to give it to the user? So that is always a starting point. Um, and then it goes into, you know, how, what kind of, what level of uh, excitement or engagement or empathy you want to create for the user. And then that, that is how that process would, would work. Just like I said earlier, the process won't change. However, the uh, interactions with other things such as creative storytelling technology uh, would make some impact on how we design uh, for users. Right. So we are Abhijit uh, is asking, yes, uh, thank you Abhijit for your comments, but he, he is asking, you know, which technology do you think will be won uh, in coming days, uh, like AR or VR? I think it's very interesting. Yeah, so, <laughs> so again, I'm not a I'm not that, I think that, that turtle who gives, you know, who, who is going to win a world match. So, of course, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know which technology will win. I, and I really don't care because as long as the user wins, as long as user will decide, right, the future of the technology, the user will decide. Uh, I think both will remain out there. VR has a use case in training, tremendous use case. It has a great use case in gaming. AR has a great use case in lot of operational aspects and augmenting it into retail and uh, travel, leisure. So there are many use cases uh, for both AR and VR. I think maybe in future we are going into, I think, more about mixed uh, realities. I think that will be, I think we have to do a lot of hybrid things in future. And we never know what hardware and technology get evolved right. in future is uh, so one more, I think we'll just take a last question here. So these are, Vikram is asking, are you in a research of electric noise? I think that is the correct word, I don't know. Uh, to enhance the VR experience and your thoughts on AR application and versus web-based AR. Uh, electric noise, research uh, of electric noise. To it's electric noise to shut to be precise. Okay, yes. sorry. Electric noise. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so Vikram, no, we are not in that, and I, I have, we have not done electric nodes yet. So, um, uh, yeah. So right now we are not. Okay, we create experiences. Uh, and on a, your second question, AR application versus web-based AR, right? Um, again, for for us, technology is just a mean uh, through which we deliver experiences to end users. Um, I, I think web-based AR will have a great potential. I personally believe so. And sure. it, it could be, it could be a combination of uh, web-based and app-based. See, uh, applications like Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, they will go app with app-based because they already have apps and most of the people like Google. Google will go app-based, Google Maps. 
right mm-hmm. so uh, but there are there are uh, use cases where the apps are not installed on our devices in that case it would be either camera based experience uh, uh, for for triggering the experience and then it will play into a web view or a, a web browser but there is a huge potential for that as well sure i thanks i think uh, uh, i think i think we have covered a lot of points today and i think this is very uh, great discussions today we have and uh, yes once again thanks participants who are attending today's session hopefully uh, some doubts because it is speech is very field is very huge and to cover every aspect in small today's talk is very important difficult but i request do follow rahul do follow ethos uh, and do follow ux expert and so you get a lot of information there also and i think it uh, ethos is continuous the hiring also so if you are interested please do connect with uh, you know uh, team with ethos team and maybe probably you can also work with a great team here uh, yes i think thanks everybody and uh, uh hopefully we will meet uh, now probably after 26 january itself uh, i do plan few small kind of webinars in december but that not will be uh, considered as a us stock itself so thanks once again rahul for your valuable time and giving uh, your valuable information for us community uh, hope uh, our purpose our agenda today is to give that insight to our audience is now I think that would be a success in that. Uh, great. Th- thank thanks. you very much. Thanks. Yes, thank you very much, Tushar, and thank yeah. you uh, to all the participants. Uh, happy to be here on the call, sure. and uh, absolutely looking forward to some great UX designers in VR and AR field. Great, sure. And thanks everybody. Uh, still, uh, we are facing a lot of problems around us, so do take care. Stay safe. and uh, hopefully we'll soon meet personally somewhere where we can do lot of interactions and can be something good thanks everybody thanks rahul thank you dushan yes have a great day bye sure bye take care